Potosi, one of the highest cities in the world. The story of Potosi is sad. It is the story of riches to rags. This mountain produced so much wealth, so much silver that Potosi became one of the richest cities in the world. But things changed in the centuries to come. In this video, we explore the riches to rags story of Potosi, which was once the city of silver. Hola, Hola. Namaste. namaste. This is Pubali. This is Sindrunil and we are Paradise Catchers. We are an Indian couple living in Costa Rica and we bring to you stories about traveling and digital nomad life in Latin America. After spending a week in Sucre, the capital of Bolivia, we traveled 150 kilometers southwest to the city of Potosi in a drier part of Bolivia. On the way to the next destination, Potosi. Now welcome to Potosi. It was a three hours ride and we are here in Potosi now. This is the new bus station behind us and our hotel is in Centro. So we'll have to look for a taxi to go from this new bus station to the Centro which is around uh, four and a half kilometers. There are hills, there are mountains all around uh, but it looks very dry uh, as in, in the arid part of Bolivia but very different from Sucre. Potosi, the capital city of the department of Potosi in Bolivia, stands at an altitude of over 4,000 meters, making it one of the highest cities in the world. Towering over this town is a tall mountain called Cerro Rico, which translates to the rich mountain. This mountain not only shapes the geography of this city, but also shapes the history of this place. Because this mountain gets its name Rich Mountain because of a wealth of silver lying inside it. The silver mines of Cerro Rico were discovered in the 16th century. This mountain produced so much wealth, so much silver that Potosi became one of the richest cities in the world during that period. However, like most of the countries in Latin America, this place was also under the Spanish colonial rule. So all this wealth belonged to the Spanish Empire. This silver from Potosi made the Spanish Empire one of the richest in the world. This production of wealth continued for over 200 years. This also has some controversies because the working conditions for the mine workers were not so great. The Spanish forced thousands of indigenous people to work in the mines so that they can keep producing huge amounts of silver. By the time Bolivia got its independence in 1825, the mines almost ran out of the wealth of silver. Still, the locals here, the people of Potosi, even to this day, go to the mines in the hope of extracting whatever remains in that rich mountain. It still causes several controversies because the working conditions are not great. The story of Potosi is sad. It is the story of riches to rags, where the Spanish empire became one of the richest in the world. And now what remains in Potosi are people with hopes For most visitors to Bolivia, Potosi is just a stopover on the way from La Paz to Ojuni. Some people just spend a night or even a few hours on their way to Ojuni. Our original plan was also to spend just one night, but then we just decided that since we are already going there, why not spend a few days? So this is already our third day in Potosi. And we are so glad that we chose to spend time in this place so that we can understand this place better. We explored a lot on foot, we walked around uh, all the blocks uh, in the central part of Potosi. In the center of the town, the centro, there are many plazas, there are so many churches with beautiful architecture and you can actually go to the bell tower or to the terrace of many of these buildings to get a view of the entire city of Potosi and the mountain of Cerro Rico. The Potosi Cathedral is one of the most remarkable architecture located at the center of Potosi. This church was rebuilt in the early 19th century when the previous structure collapsed. Our guide took us through the intricate baroque details, gilded altars and the stunning religious artworks of the 19th century. 
Apart from viewing the intricate interiors, we went to the bell tower of the cathedral. As we were there just before the sunset, we watched the beautiful colors paint over the Cerro Rico and the town of Potosi. This probably had the best views of the plazas in front of the church and a backdrop of red tile rooftops against the mountains. The central part of the town with all this beautiful architecture with the cobblestone streets indicate the remnants of the once glorious past of Potosi. If you venture a little out of the central, there you find a normal bustling city with all the activities, the Mercado Central, people carrying out caring about with their daily activities. And also on the periphery of the city, you see buildings not like this colonial architecture of the centro, but more like the brick-like structures that we had seen in La Paz and other cities of Bolivia. Another important building in Potosi is the mint, La Casa de Moneda. This is where all the coins, the money used to be manufactured in Bolivia. It's not functional anymore. However, it's a nice place to take a tour around. There are big replicas of coins. Here is an old coin printing machine in the mint. So the coin would be placed here and the emblem would be printed just above it. So if you struck on the top, the emblem gets printed on the coin. One of our most interesting food finds in Potosi was this one, a volcanic hot stone soup, Kalapurka. Uh, this is the volcanic rock. Let's dig it. It's a thick soup. It's good? Yeah, it's good. It's hot. <laughs> Are you waiting for something? The Kalapurka was followed by a buffet with salads, carbs and the main course at the table. Food salad. The central market of Potosi is full of this fruit salads which has this interesting different flavors of cream and with different types of fruits on it. So. So definitely a nice treat after a good main course. After eating all sorts of empanadas, time to try the cousin, saltenias. Saltenias. First night. <laughs> Come on. Soup inside. It's like the curry inside. The most important thing, the most important touristy thing to do in Potosi is taking a tour of the silver mines where one can see up close and personal how the mine workers work, uh, what is their working condition and how do they operate. We chose not to go for that silver mine tour because we were not very comfortable with it. We're starting our Pujuni trip from the chaotic old terminal of Potosi. So there are so many people in this terminal. It can be. And the bus got, our bus got cancelled. We got the next bus. So we had to wait one hour more. But our bus is finally here. It will be a four hours ride to Ujuni and we'll have to rest well before we start the trip tomorrow. We just reached Ujuni. It's so cold outside. I think it's around 4 degrees but it feels like minus 1 and it's a bit windy which is why 
we are waiting inside the terminal 